having uh, milk in the morning with cereal, and then at 10 I'd have a piece of cheese, and then at noon I'd have the cherry chicken salad with cherry, dried cherries and chicken and, and, uh, and cheese all over it. And then in the afternoon, have a, a yogurt or another piece of cheese. And then in the evening, eat two veggies, right? It was a perfect, perfect diet. Except I had kidney stones <laughs> and pre-diabetes and cholesterol. It's hilarious. So anyway, so my breakfast, nothing changed. I used to have cereal with milk. Now I have cereal with milk. I just choose a plant milk. That was a very simple thing for me. I think a lot of times when you're in a grab-and-go mood, and I don't want to bring something along that I'm going to spill on my shirt and end up looking silly all day. Two fruits is a great way to go in the morning. And it's a good thing to think about in terms of extending your fast. There's, there's good data that it's a good idea to fast. It's a good idea to fast for like a Ramadan or like a, a Lent where you're decreasing your intake for a long period of time for religious reasons. People tend to live longer if they do that. But there's value in, in, in a short fast. So going to bed at 10 o'clock and fasting until 8 in the morning is really, really good for you. But if you want to try to get even more health benefits and even more of the anti-aging hormones that release when you're fasting, you can just maybe try to wait till 10 to have your first piece of fruit and see if you can stretch that eating fast out a few more hours. By the end of the year, you'll have fasted an extra six or 700 hours by putting the breakfast off for an hour or two. Or it's a good idea to eat your dinner and close the kitchen. I, we don't go back in for ice cream or popcorn or anything else at night. We eat dinner, the kitchen's closed, and then you're fasting from 6 o'clock at night till 6 in the morning. So just, just a little bit longer. Very, very good. You'll stay thinner over your lifetime. And the other nice thing about fruit is it just digests. You know, you eat it, it digests very simply. Simple carbohydrates, a little complex carbohydrate, a little fiber. Fruit in the morning is brilliant. And then for lunch, I think lunch converted surprisingly easily. Like my chicken salad just went to an Aztec salad. So now I have the salad with black beans and some salsa and some tortilla chips. My salad is really healthy and I feel a lot better in the afternoon. We have good rat data that has been also replicated in humans that if you feed somebody a high fat diet, you lower their productivity for like seven or eight hours. So if you end up going out for lunch and you have a burger and, and fries, you're going to slow yourself down and get that slump in three or four. You may be able to correct your slump just by correcting your lunch. But if you like to have soup and sandwich, just have a veggie wrap and then three bean chili. There's all kinds of, of veggie soups everywhere I go now. And if you like a burger, just switch it to a veggie burger. And if you're not used to them, lots of pickles. Pickles just like to make them perfect. I love pickles. And, and snacks, I don't like you to snack. Uh, but, and I have a whole section on that before. But I just think it's better to eat and not eat. And eat it's better for your body. But I want you to just do, I just want to do a shout out for a second on raw food. Because say you do get this slump. Say it's 3 in the afternoon and, and your boss just barked at you or you called your husband to try to figure out dinner and he barked at you and now you feel awful and you head for the vending machine, right? Am I the only person who does this? <laughs> or the Ben and Jerry's after your boyfriend leaves in a big snowstorm when they told you that if you leave you'll get ticketed because you shouldn't be on the road. That's happened to me too. <laughs> That's a funny story because I got that guy all straightened out. But we'll talk about that now. <laughs> Get him just exactly almost down to his high school weight, and then on he goes. <laughs> but anyway, in the mid afternoon, uh, let's just take this room. Let's take this room and we'll show everybody a, a 20 minute video about people that are not relevant, people that just don't matter if they're here or not. It doesn't matter if they're sick. It doesn't matter if they're dirty. Nobody helps them stay clean. They're, it doesn't matter if they can't find food. They're just, they don't really exist. And then we'll take this half of the room and you guys go out the hallway, we'll draw your blood. We know that just by going through 20 minutes of that kind of stuff, your immune system is already feeling limitations. You're gonna see decreases in the amount of immunoglobulins available to fight infection in your bloodstream. Now we'll take this other half of the room and we'll finish with eight minutes about Mother Teresa and everything that she has done to make these people visible and valuable and clean and warm and fat. And suddenly you have hope. And actually, you saw all the same hideousness that they saw. But that eight minutes at the end results in a pop in your immune system. So see, if you're in the middle of the afternoon and you call your husband and your boss barks at you and you 
feel awful, the very last thing your body, already depressed and ineffective, needs is a bunch of potato chips. But when you're looking for raw in the middle of the afternoon, you're looking for crunchy, salty, raw vegetables. You're looking for crunchy, salty, raw vegetables because they naturally concentrate sodium. And they're gonna give you that crunch that the potato chips are giving you, but they're not gonna hurt you at all. That's what your body is asking you when you're craving for chips. So I love raw food. Now, I'm just gonna spend a minute on this. This is um, from Antonia Damas's work down in Baltimore. She, she talks about everybody has about nine dinners that they cycle through, about nine dinners. And, uh, and, and so you can sit down with a pen and paper and write. We have taco night, we have spaghetti night. We don't really eat <laughs> remarkably fabulous food. But it, converting each of these meals to a, a more healthier choice at the end of the year is just makes an amazing difference. So if you're doing taco night, you can do bean burrito night. If you're doing stir fry, you can modify stir fry night so that it doesn't contain the chicken, but it has brown rice as your source of protein. You don't have to add the tofu or seitan. You can add mushrooms, they give a nice texture, or you can just try to eat it meatless. And then you'll be able to change dinner. Dinner's a little tricky. Dinner's a little tricky to change because it's not just you, it's your whole family too. You know, and it's your partner, if your partner is dragging his or her feet. But the great thing is, when you change dinner, you change dinner for so many other people besides yourself. So that's why our first cookbook is 100 vegan dinners. You know, done in beans, grains, pastas, <coughs> soups, and sandwiches. So you have 100 choices that are gonna energize and invigorate and protect everybody. High antioxidants, low fat, really healthy food. So for example, here's our meatloaf versus red beans and rice. 510 calories versus 530 calories. We're not gonna play any, any games here. But look at this, 10.7 ounces of meatloaf to get 510 calories, 25.8 ounces of red beans and rice, you're gonna give yourself a bottle of instruction if you eat that much of red beans and rice, that's a lot of food. So 230 calories from fat goes to 30 calories from fat, 26 grams of total fat down to three saturated fat, tons of that nasty omega-6 fat, um, that now goes down to virtually nothing. Fiber goes up, cholesterol goes down, protein, very, very stable. Oh, did I say more protein in red beans and rice? I lied, sorry, I lied. <laughs> and otherwise, all of your individual micronutrients just get really, really fabulous. Very, it, it's so easy to nourish yourself when you're making a plant selection instead of a uh, meat selection. If you want to get really, really, really healthy, though, it, it's okay to go veg, but if you want to get maximum benefit, get your meat and dairy under your thumb. If you can get this problem under your thumb, if you can fit the amount of meat and dairy that you're consuming every day under the pad of your thumb, you're getting 95% of your calories from your plants. We have 400, 400 nutritional studies that show that 95% is as good as 100%. If you're doing this for the animals or you're doing this for the environment, you know, then 5% may seem completely inappropriate to you. But there are times when you're in a circumstance where you don't want to position yourself as the vegan in the crowd or you want to be, if someone invites you to dinner, you don't want to try to make them create another dinner, perfectly okay to find 5% of your calories coming from animals from a health standpoint. I'm here for you. I mean, I do it for the environment, for the animals, but I do it primarily for the people, you know? And, and it, it, you, you don't have to be perfect in order to, you know, really experience great benefits from this diet. Oh, so here's olive oil. So this is a great thing to position when you're dating a fellow who's 40 pounds overweight and chronically constipated, <laughs> and you're trying to feed him your food. This is what happened to me. And I couldn't feed this guy any, any of my food. I, I would cook him these wonderful dinners, and he would sit down to eat them, and then he'd eat four bites and put his hands on his lap and visit pleasantly with me, and then he would leave. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong. But then when I started to talk to him about his food, he would talk about bisque and, and burgers and ice cream. And he just loved these high fat, super creamy foods, right? And I wasn't giving him enough fat. My food wasn't feeling right in his mouth. So I poured a lot of oil into my cooking. And all of a sudden, he started eating my food. So he was getting the textures and getting the benefits of the plants, but with too high of fat. And then over a while, I was able to, you know, back off on the oil just a little bit. Every once in a while, throw in something very low fat, and, and we got it hooked. 
and then uh, and then 40 pounds fell off. Absolutely fantastic outcome. So if you are looking for an opportunity to like help somebody get on board with this, but they're not really enjoying my recipes. If you're about to start and you're looking at my books and the, and the food just doesn't taste right, just up the oil for a short time. Not for the next five or 10 years, but for the next six, eight months. And then you can slowly bring it back and it'll give you that fat concentration that you're used to and make it taste, uh, and make it taste exactly right. You know, it works really, really well when you're switching to diet. But don't get yourself into a lot of oil. You don't need it. And studies show that when you take a concentrated, like a tablespoon of oil, they did these studies on mice. I mean, way back when Pritikin was doing his studies. So forgive me, it's a mice, it's mice data. But they gave the mice this high oil diet and then pooched out their cheeks so they could watch the blood flow through their blood vessels. And the blood flow is actually decreased for like 13 hours after you consume the equivalent of one fettuccine alfredo dinner. So if, if you do that, you fettuccine alfredo at night, then you get up in the morning and you have like an egg and coffee sandwich, my goodness, you can't get your blood, it's all sluggish that whole time. So it's a good idea to stay away from these concentrated sources of fat. I'm always so impressed when people are no oil. A little oil is probably okay, but if you're in a secondary prevention issue where you're dealing with heart disease or stroke that you've already experienced, it's good to get the oil out of it entirely. So there's room for all of us to change their diet. There's room for me to change my diet now that my life is slowing down and the, and the moving truck is packed. I'm really looking forward to focusing on my food a little bit more. An average American consumes a half a teaspoon of kale per day, but also 32 teaspoons of added sugars a day. So it's a, just a great idea to get some of these unhealthy calories out and push up on some healthy calories. So I, I, I try to make this fun and interesting, but it wasn't it wasn't easy for me. I don't want you to think that this was an easy thing for me to do when I did it. I really felt deprived, specifically for cheese and also for barbecue ribs. I love barbecue ribs. And I can tell you that there's a million alternatives. You can barbecue tofu, but I do miss barbecue ribs. I mean, some stuff is really hard to give up. So, I, and I also, I had all these old standbys. I had these recipes I used all the time. They were good. I, I knew how to make them. My mother made them for me. And they had to go away. And then I had all of these new recipes. And in some ways that was fun and sometimes not so much fun. But there was one night I was standing in my kitchen and I couldn't think of what to cook for the girls. I'd been doing this for three years. My older daughter was home from medical school. And, and I thought, you know what I'd love to make for those girls? I'm in the mood to cook my, my bundles, my pork bundles. It's a really fatty piece of shoulder pork, and you grind it up, and then you put um, peanuts and onions and garlic, and brown sugar, and fish sauce, and it ends this Thai pork bundle. They're absolutely delicious. And then you put them inside a, a lettuce leaf and eat them, you know, like a, like a burrito. We used to have them a couple times a month, but I haven't had them in three years because I can't eat them anymore because I'm vegan. And so I stayed in my kitchen with this snotty attitude, and then I went, well, now wait a minute. Anywhere you put meat, you can just put a bean. So I took out pinto beans, you know, drained them, rinsed them very well. If they're rinsed and cooked really well, they digest super easily. And uh, and then all of a sudden I had pinto bean bundles together. My older daughter came running up from the basement and she said, you can't, you can't eat that, we can't eat that. We don't eat that anymore. <laughs> Actually, I'm making it with beans. She couldn't believe it. And then the little <coughs> one came upstairs and she didn't know the smell. She was like, what are you cooking? So lucky us. So now we eat these pinto bean bundles. They're on page 71 of Waste Away. And they are so delicious. They're still a little high in oil, so they're not an everyday dish, but man, are they fun. So, and this ordinary diet, you might have a bowel movement every morning. That turns out to just be so weird and unhealthy. You can pick up a bowel movement after every meal. And things move a lot quicker. They really do, and that's much more normal. Uh, you might experience some weight loss. The average vegan is 40 pounds lighter than the average omnivore. So it's really hard to sustain an unhealthy weight on this diet. Um, going with the flow is a lot easier, just doing what everybody else is doing. And this diet does tend to draw attention. You know, you have to ask what's in the food. It's, it's sometimes hard to do. So you can do a couple of things. You can utilize that 5% rule. You know, if you're in a situation where you don't know when you're starting to feel funny and you don't really want to ask all your questions, just make this the night that you can do 5% and, 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 and uh, go off your diet a bit. Um, but, or you can uh, just come up with some little lies. This is, and, and these don't get counted up, uh, up with St. Peter, up at the pearly gates. When you get up there, he's not, these aren't in your book. <laughs> so, so two lies that I love to use. 
Um, I had a great big lunch. I'm really, really full. I, I, it, it, I'm just not going to eat much dinner because I'm just way too full from lunch. I wanted to eat till breakfast. And then that way, if you can't find anything on the menu, you can have a salad and a potato, and you can just be done with it. Or you can uh, say, I have this really great breakfast set up for me and my boyfriend in the morning, like mimosas, vegan waffles, all kinds of fruits, so I want to have a whole bunch of calories saved in the morning. And then all the conversation with you and your girlfriends goes around your great relationship and doesn't focus on your calcium or your protein. You can just totally have a big lie and, and enjoy your evening. So, <laughs> so your productivity and energy levels may change. There may be some changes in your bowel patterns, but I'll tell you, I have a bunch of patients with irritable bowel syndrome, inflammatory bowels, lots of gas problems. Myself, personally, I have a terrible reaction to eggs, and I couldn't figure it out for like 15 years. I'd be sick and bloated, and then once I got the eggs out of my diet, everything streamlined. I'm like the egg barometer. If they put eggs in the pasta, I'll tell you. Even if they say the pasta's egg free, like, no, there's eggs in this pasta. So you, you can get some improvements, actually, in your, in your system, functioning in your GI system. So here in your community, we have a new weight loss or get healthy program called Get Wasted. We have launched six different uh, franchises across the country now. And Brittany Miller in, in the red shirt here, halfway up, is running your, your location here in the Whole Food Store in Madison. So it's a once a week meeting, uh, weight loss with a facilitated discussion. But then it's all focusing on this very high antioxidant low-fat, super healthy diet to not only help you lose weight, but to also help keep you incredibly healthy as you age. So it's a it's going to be a terrific program here. If you know anybody who needs uh, who needs this help, get a hold of Brittany. She has her business cards with her today, and, uh, and we'll be just walking around. And, uh, and then if you're interested in franchising in your own community, we're committed to, uh, to building this very quickly and getting it everywhere. So, uh, so, so Questions? I think I have, do I have time? Okay. I have a few minutes. Okay, I have a few minutes for questions, like maybe five questions. Thank you. This is a question, is olive oil really healthy? I love that, is olive oil really not healthy? I do love that question. I mean, in terms of omega-3 to omega-6 uh, percentages and concentrations, you're gonna do better with olive oil than you're gonna do with, with uh, other oils. Um, olive oil, canola oil, walnut oil, or your three refined oils, or flaxseed oil, that if you're gonna get into oil, those would be good ones to get into. But again, in very limited concentrations, and better to avoid very concentrated fats, so it's going to get in the way of your weight loss goals, and it's uh, it's just not you're taking 100 calories and applying it to concentrated fats instead of applying it to some other more healthier source of nutrition. Yeah, so try to keep your oils to a minimum. All the data on omega-3 supplementation, you know, I mean, the drug reps are in my office, and 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 they'll hand me a thing about how omega-3 helps, and if I was busy. And I didn't really care about this stuff as much as I do. I would, I would just take it and go, oh yeah, I guess my patients need omega-3s. But when you read the study, it talks about people who have high omega-3 concentrations from their lifestyle, not from supplementation. Any studies done on supplementation don't show the benefit to the omega-3. So it really is getting it from your whole, whole healthy foods. What about coconut oil? What about coconut oil? Co coconut oil, you know, is not is not that healthy. They do have certain things that other oils don't have, and it's a really good marketing technique to identify something that's unique to your product and then head in that direction. But it's it's uh, it's it's going to fall, fall under all the other oils. Use it sparingly. This whole taking a teaspoon of oil or this process of oiling is that isn't that what it's called? Have you guys heard of this where you take a teaspoon of oil and hold it in your mouth for 15 minutes and move it around and it's supposed to extract? Don't do that. <laughs> that ain't working. Any other? Well, I mean, I would hate to even take you in that direction. The best oil that I would pick, because I wouldn't pick an oil for you. I wouldn't want you to, to be choosing an oil. You know, um, at, at that point, I would be trying to think about something that's sustainably harvested, fair traded, you know, and, and I, I have a supplier for olive oil in my town that's my best girlfriend, one of my best girlfriends. So, um, so I use her olive oil and then use it again very sparingly in certain dishes. Every once in a while, I like to have a crispy edge to my beans, and and then it's yummy there. Or if I'm frying potatoes, but other than that, most of the time you can get away with olive oil or with very very limited concentrations. So, uh, so try to try to focus maybe instead on, on a different nutrient. And really get the oil out. You can most of the time cook in broth 
I like to cook with a little wine. I like to cook with beer. You know, beer is fun to cook with after work if you're having a beer. And then you can put half the beer in the food and most of the alcohol goes away. But most of the time I'm just cooking in vegetable broth. Yeah, she's saying cooking in water is just the same as cooking in oil. You know what I think part of the problem is too? A lot of times I'm taking out a fry pan. And I almost think that starting out with taking out a fry pan is, is the first error that I make in my preparation. I have a girlfriend who is so healthy, so healthy, and she, she bakes everything. I, and and uh, it steams a lot too, it steams a lot too. I have this terrific girlfriend who is still in her eighth grade jeans. And if, do you hate her already? <laughs> she's so gorgeous. She has this beautiful blonde hair, and she's probably in the top 20 people in the country for bone and bone stabilization and osteoporosis. She knows that disease inside now. She's a research scientist and lives down in the Detroit area. And, and she talked to me because she was running. She runs three miles every morning on her treadmill and the, in the room next to her bedroom. Every morning, three miles. Pretty regimented girl. And she was developing knee pain. And she said, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, I don't know. And she knows that I do yoga. So she was asking me about yoga. But I said, you know what you ought to do? Kelly, you ought to just go veg. And then you'll get rid of all of these inflammatory fats. And then, you're, and then your, your knees won't hurt anymore. So she, you know, looked at me, and then she did what Kelly does. She went home and she read for 12 hours, not <laughs> diet. And then she called me back and said, "Hey, Dr. Mary, I'm vegan." This is so funny. I'm like, well, that's, that's great, Kelly. Wow. So she went to Costco. Do you guys have Costco? I think you guys do. No? Yeah. Well, Costco has these black bean burgers that are the size of your head. They're just gorgeous. So she eats one of those every single day for lunch. She skips. She, she's skipping what she used to do. And uh, and then after uh, a couple of weeks, you know, her knees didn't like they used to hurt when she would run. And then about two months later, she was feeling fantastic. She ran her three miles, and she was like, I know I'm going to hurt myself. I know I'm going to hurt in the morning, but I don't care. I'm running six. I feel so good. So she ran six on her treadmill. And then she said the next morning, she got up out of bed, and she was no pain. <laughs> six miles. So now she runs four miles a day on her treadmill every day. She says you can make yourself younger on this guy. It's so much fun. Oh, what about soy? If you're worried about soy and the phytoestrogens in soy, you should just lay awake at night about broccoli. Because broccoli has 10 times the phytoestrogens of soy. But broccoli doesn't have broccoli milk and all kinds of meat substitutes that are freaking out the meat and dairy industry. So you, you've been sufficiently freaked out on soy. But there's nothing wrong with those phytoestrogens. Think of, of, of a jumbo jet uh, coming into a jetway. And it parks in the jetway. You've got your, your this is an estrogen molecule, this is your estrogen receptor, it parks in the jetway, tons of stimulation, there's 300 people, there's barking dogs, there's luggage everywhere, it's just craziness. Or you can have the same jetway and you pull a little private plane in there, and then you've got one or two people, virtually nothing going on. That's what you're getting with your soy, both you and your husband, it's fantastic. The guys with the highest testosterone are the vegans, right? Because they're not getting all these crazy estrogens from the weird fats of the animals. So your, your guy actually gets more and more masculine so I can get them. So, so yeah, park all of those phytoestrogens into his estrogen receptors and live it up. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, I mean, just think about it. Like, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the blood vessel feeding down below is the size of a coffee stir. The blood vessel feeding the heart is the size of a straw. The blood vessel feeding the brain is the size of a smoothie straw. So it, it makes sense that my patients that are in their 40s start to come in complaining that they're having trouble down there and they're coming up on a heart attack five or eight years later. Because you can imagine if you try to sip out of a coffee stir, you can't get anything through that little tiny straw. But if you just enlarge the diameter a little bit, it's physics. All of a sudden, you can get a ton of blood flow. So, so just get him off that crazy high-fat diet. Get him, on, get him on a better diet and, and enlarge the size of his pipes. Yeah, talking about low blood sugar episodes. Some people are very sensitive and their blood sugar's going down. So it's, you know, you, you can see times where you might get dizzy or feel sick as your blood sugar goes down. But probably you just want to go up on the fiber in your foods rather than trying to add sands. Try to go with high fiber foods and then it'll slow the nutrient absorption. And then you won't have such a dip, you know. It, it's a lot easier to have have a drop, a dramatic drop in your blood sugar after you've eaten your pancake than if you've eaten steel cut oats. So just really try to decrease the processing on your, on your foods. I guess I'm going to make that the last question because you've been so kind to sit so long. And then I'll be around all day. So stop me and ask me anything. I'll be here. Thank you for coming.